Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed your week. Today's Friday for most of you. I'm sure that means your weekend starts tomorrow. That's awesome. Um, so today we're talking about, I'm just going to get it pulled up here. FOMO. Um, I remember the first time I heard this term. I think it was from uh, one of our employees, Jamie, and she mentioned it about one of her dogs. And she said, FOMO, I was like, what is that? Fear of missing out is what it is. And it, I don't know, find it to be hilarious. And um, so if you haven't heard of it, that's what FOMO is. We're going to talk about it today. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to leave them, leave them or any sort of comments, leave them. I've got it pulled up over here. Um, so that way we can chat about it. And um, yeah, so let's kind of dive in. So does your dog have FOMO? My guess is probably they do to some extent. We're going to talk about a few things today in regards to FOMO. So in this training, you will learn what FOMO is. Um, and I already kind of mentioned that. So I blew the one, blew the cover there, but doesn't say which order, doesn't say you would learn it before this. Um, but also how to help dogs with FOMO. So we're going to touch on three different ways that dogs may be dealing with this or suffering from it, however you want to word it. And um, there are plenty of other ways, but we're just going to dive in on three. So the ones that we'll be talking about um, is like FOMO when a dog's on leash, FOMO when a dog is like in their home, um, and then also like in the home in terms of when you're there with them and they're looking like through a window, for example. But then also lastly, like being left alone. So like fear of missing out in terms of you're gone, they want to go too. Um, so kind of dive in on these three topics. And again, that's just what I want to cover. There's other ones as well. Um, but we don't have all day. So let's start off with on leash, uh, FOMO. What do we often see with that? Well, oftentimes we see barking. Um, we also will see lunging generally, and we will also see pulling and other things too, maybe whining, sometimes like growling. Um, so there's something called barrier frustration. And, um, it's safe to say that that is, um, kind of derives from fear of missing out. And, and we'll kind of dive into that. But basically, these are the things that you will generally see when a dog is experiencing FOMO. And, and I oftentimes think about that in regards to like your dog's on leash. And here she sees another dog. And they are starting to display these behaviors because they want to go over and, and say hello to that dog. But it could also be because they want to go and, and you know, chase a squirrel or something like that. But so if we've got those behaviors, we've got barking, pulling, lunging, um, what, what can we do? So what are the options? How can we, we change that? Or, or, or is it changeable? Um, so the answer is yes, we can do some things about it. Um, so with the on leash, um, first things first, if you have a dog that's um, experiencing fear of missing out, and they're doing a lot of pulling, barking, lunging, and, and they're hard to handle. One of the best things to do is manage. And what I mean by this is get them into some sort of equipment that makes life easier for you to hold on to them. Um, for a lot of dogs, a, a harness where the leash attaches to their chest is a fantastic option. That's going to reduce their leverage. It'll give you a bit more leverage simply because if they're trying to pull with all their might, it's very hard to pull with like your chest. It would be much easier to pull from like your back, like a sled kind of scenario. Um, it would also be a bit easier to pull from your neck than it would be from your chest. So if you're using like a flat collar or if you're using a back attaching harness, switch to a front attaching harness. And that oftentimes makes it much more manageable. So we can manage with that. There's also head halters, which are great. So if you have a very large dog, that's very strong, or maybe even not that large, but very strong, a head halter is another good tool that reduces their leverage and gives you more leverage. Um, so what we can do is manage to just make it a bit easier, uh, I like to teach more appropriate behaviors too. Um, so instead of just managing and saying, well, I'm just going to hold on and get through this. I like to say, okay, I know that you're frustrated. You want to go over there and greet right now. That's not an option. Let me have you do this instead. So behaviors that are incompatible with barking, pulling, lunging would be looking back at you. Or if we teach a leave it, a leave it would mean, hey, disengage, which may mean look all the way back at me, or it may mean just look away. Those are things that we can reward. Um, find it is a fantastic one. Find it simply means, hey, find this treat that I'm rolling on the ground. So we can teach more appropriate behaviors for dogs that are um, having this on leash um, FOMO. Um, the other thing we can do is try upping the motivator. So 
if you're, you know, bringing food on the walk, for example, and you're trying to get them to do something more appropriate, but they're just not into it, you have uh, the opportunity to potentially offer something better. Maybe you've been using kibble or store-bought treats. Maybe try cheese or meat, uh, chicken or steak or something like that. Those things generally help as well. And there's so many more things. Like, for example, if your dog um, is leash reactive towards other dogs, and, and you know we could call that FOMO because he's fear of missing out, wants to get there to greet the dog. Um, one of the things that we can do is also give our dogs plenty of opportunities to play with dogs. So therefore it decreases their motivation and they won't feel like they're missing out on anything because they play with dogs quite often. So if you have a dog that's very leash reactive, but loves dogs, why don't you um, go to daycare, go to dog parks? And then therefore, when you have them on leash, they won't have such a fear of missing out. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. I've got it pulled up over here so that way I can see them. Um, if you leave them live, obviously I'll see them live. If they come in after the fact, I don't see them now. I don't know. Sometimes I miss comments. So I'll come back and, and cycle through. But with on leash fear of missing out, we can manage with more, you know, head halters or body harnesses that give us a bit more leverage. Um, we can teach more appropriate behaviors and we can also try upping the motivator. And again, I mentioned this, it's not on the list, but you can try to give your dog an, an outlet. So therefore they don't feel like they're missing out because they always get that outlet. So therefore um, let them play with dogs, for example, if their fear of missing out is, is um, directed at another dog. So, or, you know, if it's directed towards people like, Hey, I see a person, I love people. I want to get over there you know, we, we can use the same formula, manage, teach more appropriate behaviors, try upping the motivator, but also if they're doing the correct thing, we can let them greet the person, uh, depending on the scenario, of course, they might not always get to, but that's kind of on leash FOMO and some things that y'all can do to help with that. Let's move on. Another one that I chose is like through a window, because I know that a lot of people are dealing with dogs barking through windows all the time. And in a lot of cases too, more than ever, I think people are working from home and, you know, like right now I'm working from home with two dogs. V is next to me sleeping and Rosa is, I think she's outside in the sun. Um, my wife's home. So she's not just, I don't know. It's okay. It's safe. But with that being said, like my dogs, they're older so far it's safe. But if, if V was like two years old and he was full of energy right now, I wouldn't just sit here and, and, and hope that he does a, he doesn't do anything wrong when I'm doing this. So I would manage. And anyway, We'll get more into that. But so through a window is another thing. And what and behaviors that we typically see, barking, um, running from window to window. Um, what's the other one I put? Jumping. And I, I mean, you can just combine all of those into one sequence of running and jumping on that window, running to the next window, jumping, barking the entire time. And there could be a lot of reasons why it's happening. But what I want to talk about is the dogs that are really social and, and just really simply want to get out to see those things. So they're having FOMO. Um, but there's other things like dogs could be frustrated and, and, and all that, but let's go ahead and just say that, I mean, I think they're frustrated if they have FOMO, but they could be also um, upset. So let's just assume that they're really happy, but very frustrated because they can't get out there. So they they fear they're missing out. Um, so let's kind of dive in. Um, what can we do? Do y'all have any, any ideas? Um, I'm sure some of the things you've already tried or, or, or something. So I'm, I'm going to give you some, some ideas though. So what can we do? First things first, we can block visuals. Um, there's no reason to, they, they don't necessarily feel like they're missing out on anything if they don't know it's out there. So blocking visuals is great. So if I had this scenario, this is a stock image, but this dog's looking out the window. Um, I know that we oftentimes want to let our dogs look out windows because we want them to not feel like they're enclosed in a home all the time. And I, and I get that. We want to give them like live TV, if you will. Um, but sometimes it leads to a lot of frustration and a lot of unwanted behavior. So an easy concept or an easy uh, exercise or scratch out, an easy thing to do is to manage by blocking visuals. And if I had the same exact scenario with this stock image here, that dog can see basically just that first pane of glass. Um, you could put a frosted glass window sticker just there. So, you know, he can't actually see through it. It's, it's frosted. Uh, all the light can still come in and you don't even have to do your whole window because in this case, he can't see above that spot. So you just go as high as you need to go. So blocking visuals is a great way to kind of manage and prevent it simply because if they don't know it's out there, then there's no reason to fear that they're going to miss out. Um, white noise for blocking out sounds as well. Cause even if they can't see, they may hear. What if they hear dogs barking and they love dogs? or they hear dogs walking by because you live close to the street and that gets them very excited. And then they start barking and running around. Um, 
So we could also have some white noise on, and that could be a white noise machine, which those are pretty cheap. You can get those and play, you know, waterfalls or, or um, rain or something. Um, could have a TV on or just some classical music, whatever, something though that kind of helps drown out any sort of outdoor noises. That's a great way to prevent this from happening as well. Um, and I'm just checking over here to see if there's any comments and I'm not seeing any yet. So if you have any, you know, any comments or questions, feel free, feel free to leave them. So another thing too is um, teach more appropriate behavior. So if I don't want to block visuals, if I don't want to run any sort of white noise uh, in the background, then what can I do? Well, um, from a training standpoint, it, depending on how much effort you want to put in, one thing you could do is teach a very reliable, come when called, cute, like you could teach them to come when you call. You then reward them with food. And then you must, you'll probably have to use like a downstay or something to keep them away from the window for long enough to allow the thing to go by. Um, so if you do that, then they start realizing when things go by, if they come back to you, something good happens. It can work very well. It involves you giving them stuff. And it may, you know, depending on where you live, you might have people going by every five minutes and your dog might be running to you every five minutes to get a piece of food. So it might be doable for you. It may not. Um, I also like to go with a leave it and a timeout method. So if I, you know, they start barking, I would say leave it. And if they um, calm down, then it's like, cool, we're good. If he or she barks again, we say, oh, too bad. And they're put into the penalty box for a minute or so. So doing that gets them the, you know, the, the response basically, or the, uh, the consequence of barking gets them put away. Most dogs don't enjoy that. So therefore that can decrease the barking. You can pair, you know, kind of pair it too, where, uh, and then, you know, if your dog is quiet, you could go over and reward them, assuming that you have any idea of what's going on. Um, so there's different options there. Um, teaching more appropriate behaviors would be like coming when called, like coming away from it and rewarding them. Um, timing them out isn't necessarily teaching a more appropriate behavior, but it can be effect an effective way to decrease the barking. Um, I really go typically with options one and two, block visuals or white noise for blocking sounds. My front door is made up of, it's a very old front door and it has like nine or 12 window panes similar to this window. It's, it's, um, and we live, I don't know, 12 feet from the sidewalk or something. So from the standpoint of not wanting people to just be looking in my home and also not wanting my dogs to just be staring out and potentially barking at other dogs, we put up frosted window stickers. Um, the way that our house is set up too, um, we have blinds that we can pull down in the front windows if that's an issue. So we do that. I don't have to block out any white noise. Um, Via's lost most of his hearing, so he doesn't hear any sort of outdoor things. And Rosa doesn't really care about noises outside. Um, so it doesn't matter for her, but V used to be very good at barking at random noises. So, you know, white noise could have worked back then for him. But that's uh, just some feedback for you all in regards to if you have dogs that bark through windows or doors. Let's move on. So, oh, and then um, the other thing I wrote too, I forgot to put that is give access more frequently. So, and this kind of goes along the same point that I said for the last, um, for like on leash stuff, is if, it, if they're constantly barking at other dogs because they love other dogs, then if you do things like dog parks or daycare, that can decrease their, you know, fear of missing out because they're like, whatever, I play with dogs all the time. So they're not as motivated to get up there and, and, and feel like they're missing out on something. So when you can give them access to it more, that can decrease it and others decrease their motivation in other um, scenarios. All right, let's move on. So Home Alone, um, not like the movie. That's a good movie. I watch that every year for around the holidays. Um, so Home Alone, oftentimes in terms of behaviors we see or, or we hear, or if you're watching on video, like vocalization or vocalizing, um, and then we also oftentimes see other behaviors that can appear to be separation anxiety related. So SA stands for separation anxiety. Um, but then like, depending on what we're seeing, it may be separation anxiety, but if it is, it's, we don't typically consider it to be frustration. Um, but it also could just be, you know, fear of missing out. And so that, you know, what we oftentimes see is, well, let's dive in. Um, what can we do? Let's start off with that. What can we do? Well, that's what we'll dive into now. But basically, you know, if, if we figure out that your dog is not actually having separation anxiety and is just having like FOMO, um, there's a couple different things you can do. So let's dive in. Um, one of them, one of them is physical exercise. And, and I want to make it clear that physical exercise is not going to help separation anxiety. That's not what this is about. So 
don't that don't think that that's what I'm saying. But if a dog does have fear of missing out or FOMO, if we increase their physical exercise, that generally helps because if they're exercised before you leave, they're not as motivated to want to come with you because they've already had part of their needs met. So there's that. Uh, we also have mental stimulation, which is great because if they are, if their brains are tired, again, they're not so at, they're not going to be as apt to want to come with you because they've already had their needs met. So those are just a couple things. Um, I want to give you all an example too. So if I walk my dog V and I leave Rosa behind or vice versa, I typically give the one I leave behind something to work on. Um, if I walk V, V doesn't actually care much. He doesn't have FOMO if Rosa goes for a walk, but Rosa does have FOMO if V goes for a walk. So I'm, I'm more or less, she's the one that gets stuff. V just lies down and says, okay, I'm going to take a nap. But with Rosa, what I can do is before we go for, before I take V for a walk, I just give her a stuffed Kong or a food, interactive food toy. And that works. That distracts her. It gives her some mental stimulation, a little bit of physical exercise. And by the time we get back, she's just lying down on the carpet, um, had, and she had her needs met, so she feels good. Um, that's and that's because it's FOMO. If she was having like some sort of separation anxiety, and and I was attempting to do something like that, it would not work. So, if we're dealing with FOMO and it's just kind of like I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, but they're not actually anxious about it, you can oftentimes distract them with something, and it and it does work. Um, so that's just a quick example. So feel free to give them something to do. That's another great thing. But if we increase their physical exercise and mental stimulation you end up with a dog that is less, less concerned about you leaving and doesn't necessarily fear that they're missing out on anything. Again, I'm checking to see if there's any comments here. So feel free to you know leave any comments or questions. I don't think I've missed any. I don't see any at the moment. So if I have missed any, yeah, I have not seen any yet. So we're good so far. Um, all right, let's move on. So let's kind of go through homework. Um, I, I like to give homework. I think it's fun. Um, so one of the things if you're dealing with FOMO, especially out on leash, try switching your gear and or upping your motivator. So I love those ideas because they're my ideas. No, I'm just kidding. They're not mine. But um, try doing one or both of those things. It can make your life way easier. There's so much more to be said about it too. I'm, I'm condensing this down into a small, like a short little video here. But I mean, we can also, you know, if your dog is FOMO, increasing the distance between them and the thing that they really want can decrease their, their reactions and all that. So there's more to be said, but in general... Try switching your gear and or upping your motivator. Um, also, you know, I think in general, increasing your dog's physical and mental exercise will help with FOMO. If they're tired and they've had their needs met, they're less likely to put up such a, uh, a fight in terms of wanting to get to that thing. So if you have a young social dog, you could do dog parks or daycare. Um, if you have a dog that isn't um, the right candidate for those things, you could try... Um, well, regardless, you could do work to eat toys, stuff Kongs, and this is just enrichment in general. There's so many options out there. Um, if you have one of my favorite things that I used to do is I used to put some roller blades on and V would pull me and he would be so tired by the time we were done. Um, and I would just let him pull and go full speed. And after doing it for 15 or 20 minutes, he was done for. Uh, I've mentioned that in the past too. It's also a great way to let them pull a bunch, get it out of their system. And then you can teach them loose leash walking after. So in general, these things great. Um, so that's your homework. Um, I'm going to get ready to wrap up here. So this is your last chance to uh, ask any sort of questions or leave any comments that I can read. Um, I see a lot of people have come on. So thanks everybody for watching. This will, you know, it is recorded. So therefore it will be live on the page forever. I'll also upload it to YouTube. So if you want it, there you go. Um, if you're on our mailing list as well, it will be emailed out. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to end. Have a uh, good rest of your day and take care.